Welcome back to the channel. And in today's tutorial, I'm gonna show you step-by-step step how to make this animation that you see here. And it's just essentially two buckets and one pours some balls into the other one. So it's some pretty simple animation here, as you can see, um, nothing complicated. Um, this is a very good beginner tutorial. So if you're already into advanced things in Blender, maybe this will be a bit boring, but for you beginners, this is gonna be a ton of fun. And maybe even if you're not a beginner, um, this is just a fun little animation to make. So we'll go through it all the way to the end, finished end product that you see here. And because this one is so simple, I probably won't put this blend file onto my Patreon like I usually do. Um, most stuff I do. So this one, we'll just, you know, won't put it on Patreon, but you can follow along. It's completely free to get Blender and you can just make this animation as well. So let's jump in and make it in Blender. Okay, so we've been using Open Up in Blender. Let's select all the default objects and we'll press delete on our keyboard. And we're gonna go Shift A. We're gonna go to our mesh options. Let's add in a cylinder. And let's tap into our front orthographic view. And with your cylinder selected, if you actually um, just go into edit mode, right? By the way, you can hit tab as the shortcut to go into edit mode. You can make sure everything is active. If it's not, just press A and it should select everything. But you're gonna go G and when you hit G, you can move the mesh and then you can follow it with Z on the keyboard to constrain it to the Z axis. And then if you hold in control or command, you can snap. So we're gonna just go ahead and snap it like that to the ground. You can see we have the red axis line there as a front reference. You can see there, now we have this. We're gonna go to our face option here. Select our face, let's select our top face. And let's go S and just scale it to make the top um, sort of lip of the cup a little bit wider, like this. And then we'll go X and delete that face. And now we can press A to select everything. And then just press E to extrude and right click, but it's still active. And then you can go Alt S and just scale outside on the normals like this to give it some thickness. Let's go with something like that, looks nice. And then let's come over here to our mesh edit mode. Let's come down and enable the normals. And it's very important that we make sure that the normals are all facing out. For example, if you were to scale the normals in like this, the, the extrusion, then the normals would be facing inward. So it's always important to make sure the normals are facing out. If they're not in your case, for example, if they were to be like inside like that, all you have to do is go Alt N with everything selected and go recalculate outside. Now that's important because Blender looks at that when it's calculating collision surfaces. So let's come over here. We can get rid of that normal view and let's go into our object mode. For now, I'll just right click and go Shade Auto Smooth. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go Shift A. We're gonna go to a mesh option. We're gonna add in a UV sphere. We're gonna right click and go Shade Smooth. And let's go G and Z and move this UV sphere up and click. And now the scale of this is up to you. So you can make them, you know, this big or this big or even tinier. So obviously the smaller you make them, the more you're gonna fit in there, like a higher quantity of spheres, right? So I'm gonna go with something like this. I think that looks just fine. That sort of size, okay? Then I'm gonna go Control A or Command A, and I'm just gonna go ahead and apply that scale. Very important when we're scaling in object mode. Once again, Blender looks at the scale as well when it comes to collision surfaces or when we're doing our rigid body simulation. Cool, so now what we're gonna do is we'll actually just go into our top view and there's no specific way you have to do this, but I'm just gonna go move this guy over like so. I'm gonna go Shift D to duplicate and go X, move it over a bit, leave a little bit of a gap and I'm gonna go Shift R and just repeat that action a few times. And maybe, you know, I can get like five or so across like this. And it's important that they don't overlap this edge. Okay, so just check it out as you're working. So I'm gonna go something like that. Then I'm gonna go Shift D to duplicate these guys, move them up a little bit. Shift D to duplicate this guy, just a group of them, and making sure they don't overlap the edge. And then I might just grab three of these by holding in Shift, Shift D to duplicate, and I'm gonna go Shift D to duplicate again, and bring them here. And by the way, you don't have to do it 100% precise. Just make sure whatever you do, nothing is overlapping like over the edge like this, okay? So once you have that done, you can go into your front view and maybe move these guys down a bit. Then go Shift D to duplicate and Z, and move them up like so and click. And then you can go Shift R and just repeat that action maybe this many times for now. And then in your front view, just click and drag, select all of these spheres, hold in Shift and then just select any one of them. So they're the main active element. Then go over to your physics, give it a rigid body and then come here to the shape and let's make a sphere. And we can leave everything else as they are 
And then let's just press F3 over here in our view and type in copy from, and let's go copy from active. And now all the other spheres have that same property. Okay, then let's select our cup. Let's go over and give it under our physics, a rigid body. But this time we're gonna change the type to passive. We're gonna make it animate it. That's really important because we'll animate these cups. And then we're gonna go here to the shape. I wanna change it to mesh, okay? So it's not convexing anything. It's essentially just a direct mesh contact. So wherever, um, that's gonna give us the most accuracy, but um, it also costs a little bit more computationally, but that's what you wanna do with that mesh setting there. So now if we come over here and we go to frame one, like so, we can hit the space bar and now you should see all the balls fall in there. Now, if there's too many balls, which by the way, you might want that, that's fine. But if it's too many, just simply go back to frame one and then just start removing some of the ones at the top. And then from frame one again, hit the space bar. And that's it. So I might just undo that and maybe just, you know, play around with it. This is one of those things you can totally just play around with it. Okay, so that's about enough spheres for me. So I'm gonna go over that. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go into my front view and I go to frame one I'm gonna grab this cup and I'm gonna go Shift D X and move this cup over to here, like so, about that distance here. And what we'll do is for now, we'll come over here to our scene properties. We'll turn off the rigid body for now, just so we can animate. And we're gonna select this cup over here that it's falling into initially. And we're gonna come up to frame 30. And on frame 30, with this cup selected, we're gonna press I. That's gonna insert a keyframe. You can now see we have a keyframe here. Okay, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna come up to frame 50 and on frame 50, we're gonna go G and Z and move it up till it's about the height of a cup and a half like this and click and then go R to rotate it slightly and like so and click and then just go G, X and move it over to the side a little bit like this. There we go like that. Okay, and in that position on frame 50, you're gonna press I again to insert a keyframe and then we're gonna come to frame 80 and on frame 80, what we're gonna do, we're gonna go G, X and move this bucket over even a little bit more to the side and click and then we're gonna rotate it even a bit more and we're gonna press I to insert a keyframe on frame 80. And at this point, before we go any further with that animation, we'll grab this bucket over here and what we're gonna do is we're gonna come to frame 45 and on frame 45, with this bucket selected, we're gonna press I to insert a keyframe. Then we'll drag up to frame 70 and on frame 70, we're gonna go G, X and move it till it sits here in the middle of our scene right underneath all of these spheres like that. And then we're gonna press I to insert a keyframe like that. So what we're having here now, if we go to frame one and we hit the space bar, this is what we're gonna see. And then that bucket sort of starts tipping. And then now that this bucket here is in position, all we have to do is then grab this bucket again, come over to frame 110, and then frame 110 in our front view, we'll come over here now and rotate the bucket almost all the way at 90 degrees, G to move it up a little bit and back like this. There we go, just right there. And then press I to insert a keyframe. So now this is what we have. If I hit the space bar, it lifts up and then it pours. How cool. Okay. And then if you wanted to, maybe you can come to frame 130 and maybe just tip the bucket just a little bit more like that. But you know, you get the idea. So now what we can do is we can come over to our scene properties. We can enable rigid body, um, the rigid body world again. Um, let's come to frame one. Now let's hit the space bar to simulate this. And there we have it. <laughs> How cool is that? Now, if you're losing a ball, like in this case, you see we lost one over here. Just select it and press delete. Then go to frame one again and hit the space bar and see if we can fix that. There we go. Okay, and there we have it. So that is how simple this is to do. So what we can do now is we're gonna go over to our scene properties. We're just gonna go here to Richard Body World. I'm gonna come down here to the cache and let's just go and click on bake and it's just gonna bake this into our blend file. And now let's go to frame one. And we're gonna do, we're gonna select all of these spheres. I'm gonna press M to create a new collection and click um, new collection. Let's call it balls, go create. And let's come over here. Now we have a collection called balls, which we can turn off. Let's grab these two buckets and press M, create a new collection. Let's call it buckets. There we go, create. And let's drop this down to make it smaller. 
we can hide the buckets. And then we'll click on our main collection so it's active. We'll double click on it and call it stage. So with the stage selected, we're gonna go shift A, go to your measure options, add in a plane, scale it up nice and big. And then go shift A, go to your um, light options, add in an area light. G, Z, and move it up. And both of these plane and the area should be in that stage collection. You can see here, we can turn it on and off. Then come to your render properties and go up and change it from render the render engine from Eevee to cycles. If you have a GPU, I recommend you use it. And then under your max samples, you can change it to 45. And now let's enable our balls and our bucket. And by the way, because we've baked this rigid body simulation in our scene properties, if you make any changes, it won't update until you delete the bake and then bake it again. So essentially this is now baked into our scene, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go and we're just gonna get a position that we like. So I'm gonna go about here. And I'm just gonna go Shift A, I'm gonna go add in a camera. I'm gonna press zero to go into the camera view. G, middle mouse button and just zoom the camera back. Then I'm gonna go over to my camera properties and I'm just gonna go and change it 1080p to 1080p under the resolution. And under my object data properties here for the camera, I'm just gonna change it to 75 on the focal length. And I might just drag the animation in a little bit. And then when I get to a point that I like, I might just move the camera here to get a nice view like so. And now that is lined up nicely. So now if I go to frame one, hit the space bar, I can see this. And what I don't wanna see is the balls initially falling. So I'll just come to a point where they've already kind of settled. Um, so maybe around frame 30, I'll come over here. And in frame 30, um, I'll come here to the start value and make it 30 as well. So now our animation is actually starting at frame 30, and this is what we see. And I might just also grab this plane and just move it down just a little bit so it's not intersecting with the bucket. There we go. So now this is what we have. Okay, so you can grab your area light, go to your light properties. Let's give it a strength of 200. Let's increase the size, and let's just move it up a little bit. And I might just duplicate this light by going Shift D and rotating it. And you can create as many area lights as you want. So I'm gonna just maybe grab this area light. I'm gonna go Shift D, rotate it around. Okay, that looks good. So there we have some nice lighting. And then select your bucket. Go over to your materials, give it a new material. Let's call it bucket. Oops, bucket, there we go. And we can go ahead and make it metallic. Bring down the roughness a little bit and let's give it sort of like a bronzy kind of color. Might drag the roughness up just a bit. You can mess around with it all you want, but that's kind of what I'm going with. Something like that. And then I'm gonna select the other bucket here. When it comes to the drop down, give it that bucket material. And now let's just hide the, the bucket um, layer here and the stage. Let's just select all of these balls over here. Holding and shift select one of them. Under the material properties, go new, and let's just call it ball. And then go control L and just link those materials so they all have it. And then go to your shading workspace. And then in your shading workspace here, just make sure to go into a rendered view. Enable the stage again. Go into your camera view. And now with this balls principle, we're gonna go shift A, search. Let's get a object. Let's get an object info and then plug the random color into the base color. Shift A, search and get a ramp, color ramp, place it on here. Change it from linear to constant. And then you can drag these sliders here and change the color to whatever you want. You can also go plus to add in more sliders and change their color. And then just add in as many random colors as you'd like, okay? You can keep going be as creative as you want. And once you're happy with that, bring down the roughness a bit, increase the metallic. And then let's go back to the layout, go into your camera view, bring everything back. And now this is what we have. So let's just go ahead, render, and just render the image to do a quick test render. And that's looking really good so far. Okay, we'll just do a little bit of tweaking and I'll show you how to render this out as an animation. So what you could do at this point is um, you can make any adjustments to the color of the buckets if you want. I might make it a little more sort of yellowy, sort of like that. 
Um, one thing I also did is I selected my floor, I gave that a material, and then under the base color here, I clicked on this tab, and I changed it to a checker texture, and then I changed the first color to a bit of a darker value, and then I just adjusted the scale. I think that just kind of looks cool. And I also just selected my camera in the scene, and under my camera settings, I clicked on the depth of field. By the way, this will increase your render times, but it makes it look really cool. Then click on this one here that has the meter distance, the little eyedropper, and then just select maybe one of these balls as a focal element, and then bring that f-stop value down. And look at that, now you have this really sort of nice soft focus in the background, so um, yeah. If you want to render this out, you could just simply go to your output settings. Go down here and then select an output destination on your computer. Um, you could render out sequences, then compile them. But if you want to do a direct video format, you can change it to FMPEG video. And then under your um, encoding, you can change your container type. Now for me, and a lot of people, you usually go for like an MP4, which is the MPEG4 over here. But there are other options if you want. So I'm just gonna change it to MPEG4. And then you can click render over here and then render this animation out to your selected um, output. In my case, that's the desktop. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this. I'll see you next time and thank you for watching.